Today I'm going to be talking about sight reading, but quite interestingly, I'm not going to start with looking at music. We're not going to look at the notation. We're going to listen to something and we're going to listen to something and try and internalize what it actually sounds like. And then we're going to move on to the music of this and see how those things two, two things can link together so it helps us with reading rhythms in the future. So let's have a listen to this tune. This is Happy People by Kenny Garrett. Brilliant tune. If you've not listened to it, then you must go and listen to it. One of the best improvisations when it comes to telling a story. If you listen to Kenny Garrett's solo in this, it's just uh, a proper earworm. Gets in your head, gets in your ears, and it's definitely one uh, to learn, to transcribe. It's, it's an amazing um, bit of improvisation. But I'm going to play you the tune, the head. Uh, we're just going to listen to the first section of this, and then we're going to come to look at the music. So let's have a listen to it. I'm going to put my metronome on. This is 100 beats per minute. I'm playing it on uh, a tenor sax, just in case you wanted to join in. To listen to, it sounds quite comfortable. It doesn't sound like there's anything too difficult in there. It sounds like it kind of makes sense. Um, it's quite a catchy tune. It's one that you could probably sing back quite quickly, um, and that's all of those for all of those reasons are why I've chosen it for this sight reading uh, video today. So this part of the video, I'm going to try something different. We're going to try something a little bit more practical. So at this moment, I'd like you to pick your instrument up if it's handy. If not, pause it and go and grab your instrument, and we're just going to try and learn this little chunk of music by ear. So try and find the notes. There's only a couple of notes in there, so it shouldn't be too challenging to try and find, and, and just try and learn it. Just try and find what these uh, notes are and copy back this little phrase. And it's the opening phrase uh, of Happy People. It sounds like this. I'll do it again and I'll count us in this time. One, two, three, four. So quite um, an easy phrase. Um, it's one thing that you should be able to copy back quite easily. It's not too challenging. Um, now, the interesting thing is that was quite easy to hear and quite easy to copy back. When we look at the music, one thing that, that could be quite challenging, if we see that rhythm, and we're going to get to the music in a second, if we see the music to that, I think it's going to look a little bit more challenging than it actually sounds. And this is the connection I'm trying to make with what something sounds like to then what it looks like and what we can learn from that to take forward when we're looking at this music in the future. So let's have a look at the first line of music in Happy People. So here it is. Looks, I bet, just at first glance, a little bit more complex than it actually sounded when we played it just before. And, and this is what I'm trying to get at with this sight reading exercise, to look at that rhythm there's a lot in there. There's a lot of semiquavers, there's a few semiquaver rests, um, but actually to listen to, that, that makes a lot of sense. It sounds all right, it sounds quite easy to, to grasp. What I want us to try and learn now is, if we saw that rhythm, we know exactly what we need to do with that rhythm to be able to understand it and then play it successfully. So we're gonna break this rhythm down, we're gonna look at it in a little bit more detail. Let's now have a listen to it while we're looking at it. And I'll play the whole line this time, so I'll play the first four bars of this tune. I just played the first phrase before, but we're going to continue to the, the end of that first line of music. I'll put the metronome on. Two, three, four. So having looked at that in a little bit more detail now, looking at these rhythms, let's try and break it down. And what I'm actually seeing and how that's then coming out in the music. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is, or the first word I'm going to use is subdivision. Now, if you're not sure about what subdivision is, basically it's just dividing up a beat or dividing up the pulse into smaller sections that are going to make it easier to place these rhythms in the right place. More often than not, we subdivide into quavers. So if we were thinking of this pulse, that's our pulse, subdivided into quavers would be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and that's subdivision in quavers. In this, with it being a little bit more funk influenced and a little bit more complex because there's more semiquavers in there, we're going to have to subdivide in smaller chunks. We're going to have to subdivide into semiquavers. 
You can use whatever words you like when it comes to subdividing into semiquavers. I like to call it thinking like a drummer. So if you, if you talk to any drummers, they're constantly filling in all of these gaps when it comes to subdivision. They know exactly where every semiquaver of a, of a beat is. They know where every single quaver is. So they can, at any moment, accent one of those beats or one of those sub uh, parts of a beat. They just have total control over uh, rhythm within the bar. And that's something maybe as, as instrumentalists we're maybe not quite as good at because we have to think of all of these other things that are going on as well. Uh, our sound, our fingers, our tuning. There's a lot of things to think about. And rhythm is often the, the thing that just gets shunted down a little bit when, when it comes to this. What I would say is think like a drummer. Think like a drummer. So I'm subdividing all of these semiquavers in this bar. And I'm going to try a little exercise now. It, I'm hoping this is going to come across all right and it's going to make sense. And it is quite challenging to do when you first try and do this. So I've maybe gone quite a big step here, but hang on in there and stay with me. And these rules that we're going to apply to this first phrase, you can use when you're subdividing into quavers or any other uh, smaller chunk of rhythm within a pulse. So the thing I'm going to do now is fill in all of the semiquavers. So I'm going to play the same rhythm but I'm going to play constant semiquavers and then just shift the note as and when I need to. So the music's now written out like that, like I'm going to play. I'm going to play all of these semiquavers and just, and you'll hear the, the same melody, but I'm filling in all of the semiquavers. So I get that really good, strong sense of where the pulse is on top of where these semiquavers need to fit. What I'm going to do is just slow it down a little bit just so we can hear where those semiquavers are fitting. And all of the time I'm thinking about where that pulse is, always thinking about where that pulse is, thinking about where, where the, the one, two, three, four, da 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 thinking like a drummer. I'm thinking about where all these semiquavers are. So at any moment I can place any any of those semiquavers, I can move on any of those semiquavers depending on what the rhythm is actually in front of me. So I've dropped the speed down to 80 beats per minute now instead of 100 beats per, per minute, which is what it was on. I'm going to fill in the semiquavers at this speed. Okay, I'll do it again. Okay, and filling in those semiquavers gives me a really good sense of where that rhythm is, where that pulse is, and where I need to move the notes. So stripping it back now to the rhythm that's actually written at that speed, I'll do it at 80 again. Two, three, four. And now I'll try and overlay those two rhythms. I'm going to try and do something clever. I'm going to try and place my sound of both of them two little clips. Because I've done it in time with a metronome, I should just be able to put those two bits of uh, music together and you'll hear how they fit together. So the lesson that we should learn from this is when you're confronted with a rhythm like that that looks quite complex, we need to break it down. The first thing I mentioned there was subdivision. Subdividing a, a phrase or a chunk of music into smaller chunks is going to help you place those notes in the right place. That's the most important thing. We need to put the notes in the right place, otherwise the rhythm's not played right. The next thing I'm going to talk about is looking at these phrases as um, little words. So if we look at that, that phrase in Happy People, that just the first phrase, we can actually see we could actually see each one of those notes as being a letter, a letter of the alphabet. Those letters are then chunked together to create words. Those words are then chunked together to create sentences. The sentences are chunked together to create paragraphs. So we can use this idea of phrasing or little chunks of music in the same way that we, we learn how to read a language. We, we learn the alphabet, we put those word letters in the alphabet together to form words, we put those words together to form sentences, and so on and so on. And I like to look at rhythms in the same way. So if I'm looking at that rhythm in Happy People, I don't see that and think, oh gosh, I've got lots of semiquavers to fit in there, I've got lots of gaps in there, I don't quite know how to, to do that. I look at that and I see a word. So I see that as a phrase. And this is what we need to do. We need to learn what that phrase looks like, what it sounds like, and bank that. Have that in your head. How have I just interpreted that rhythm 
and how have I learnt it? Because I'm going to see it again. There are only a certain number of rhythms that you're going to see. There's not an infinite number of combinations of rhythms. You're going to keep seeing very similar rhythms over and over again, chunking of rhythms. So that's what we need to do. We need to kind of have these rhythms in our toolbox to say, you know what, I, I remember doing that in Happy People. I remember that rhythm. I remember that second beat being semiquaver, quaver, and a semiquaver. Do that, that. Do that, that. Dagger, 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 dagger. Do that, that. Dagger, 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 do that, that. And then, when you see it again, it becomes a little bit easier because you've got that knowledge of what that rhythm actually looks like. It's exactly the same as when we were learning how, how to read. We don't now have to remember our alphabet to read a word. We know what that word is because of the, our knowledge of that chunk of letters. The letters form a word. The rhythms themselves form a little word. So remember what these rhythm chunks look like and then we can move them forward when we're seeing them again in new music. And that, I feel, is the key to sight reading. We have this bank of rhythms already in our head. We've already seen these rhythms. We've already done the hard work at deciphering what these rhythms actually are. So when we see them again, we can just play them in exactly the same way as when we read a book, we don't need to go back to our alphabet. Now with that knowledge, and I am rushing through this now because this is only a very short video, we're now going to try and work in the other way around. So we started by listening to that phrase, then we looked at that phrase, we deciphered it, we worked out what it sounded like, and then we banked that so we could we could use that knowledge for when we're reading new rhythms in the future. Let's have a look at the, the B section of happy people. Again, quite uh, funk orientated rhythms. And we're gonna look at it for the first time here instead of listening to it before we play it. So we're gonna look at it and think, okay, I'm gonna subdivide that. And I'm going to think them semiquavers because I've got sem semiquavers are my smallest chunk of music. So I'm going to have to think in semiquavers. I can't think any any bigger than that because otherwise it's a little bit of guesswork as to where that semiquaver sits. So let's have a look at this first little bit. If I fill the semiquavers in, two, three, four. Dagger, 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 do that. So I'm always thinking in them semiquavers, thinking like a drummer again. If I fill all them semiquavers, and it's just a case of me picking the right one. That I need to play the the last semiquaver of beat two, and there it is, because I'm thinking of every single one of them. If we carry on and play the rest of this phrase again, I'm subdividing into semiquavers. That's certainly going to help me on this third bar, especially with all those ties. Where does that come in? It comes in just after the second beat. But if I'm thinking of that first semiquaver as an actual note in my head, I'm going to be able to place the second semiquaver of the second beat more successfully. So let's play it, this, uh, this B section of Happy People. Uh, one, two, three. <gasps> I'm thinking of all them semiquavers. You might have also spotted there some physical movement. I think that's really important. The foundation of all of this is a good sense of pulse. I would be absolutely nowhere without my metronome, but without that internal sense of where's the pulse, where is the beat, which beat am I aiming for, which beat am I trying to jump off. Having that good sense of beat, uh, beat and pulse is absolutely fundamental. I would say that's the foundation. You need to be able to find that pulse, find that beat, whether that's some sort of physical movement, a real good idea of what's going on with that uh, feeling of where the pulse is. From that good foundation of pulse and feeling of the beat, we can then add that subdivision on there with the subdivision and the knowledge of these rhythms, so that the, the work that we've already done at deciphering these rhythms and understanding them, we've got this bank of knowledge when it comes to rhythmic words, if we want to call them that, rhythmic words or rhythmic sentences, and then it's just a case of applying it to what we're looking at. Well, what we're looking at, we're we looking at something we need to subdivide into quavers, or we're we looking at something we need to subdivide into semiquavers, are we looking at something that we need to subdivide into triplets, are we looking at something we need to subdivide into any chunk of rhythm, and being comfortable with that is really key to then sight reading this music. If we can do that, think like a drummer, we can play anything at any time. Maybe not at any speed, because we might be constricted with finger technique, but we can certainly decipher it and say, oh, you know what, I can have a really good crack at what that rhythm is, because I've got this really good understanding of rhythm and subdivision, all built on a really good, solid foundation of feeling of pulse, 
and where that sits within the music. So there you have it, just a quick snippet of sight reading. I link this a little bit close, more closely to funk with that movement of semiquavers, but as I said, the same rules can apply to any uh, rhythm. We've just got to make a decision about how we're subdividing into that rhythm and then applying the same rules to any music that you're reading. Uh, start simple, start simple. You can just subdivide into um, quavers from crotchets, looking at a new rhythm and understanding what that movement is and where those notes sit. Um, all of these little things that we've done today, filling in the gaps, thinking like a drummer, filling in all of those quavers or semiquavers within a beat are definitely going to help you decipher rhythms quicker, which is, in the end, what sight reading actually is. Mm -hmm.